Hi. Hi. We're going to take a look at this Masterlock 4400D Bluetooth padlock. Yes. Grown. Ugh. Bluetooth padlock. Internet of Things bullshit. It's hard to manage everything you do, let alone protect the things in your life. Protecting those things is important and should be convenient and easy to do. So to help you unlock what matters to you, Masterlock developed Bluetooth smart padlocks. No physical key to lose and no combination to forget. They make life simple. Your phone is the key. Bluetooth smart padlocks open upon touch when your phone is with you. If you have to leave your phone in a locker or don't have your phone with you, you can open the lock using a directional code. Anyway, this is, yeah, you can open this using your phone. Um, it's got Bluetooth built in and you can either uh, un unlock it using a combination like this. Ta-da! And it's got some other fancy stuff like tamper alert, which uh, locks you out if people are trying the combination too many times. You can monitor the activity, apparently, and have guest access. Yeah, whoop de do. Anyway, it comes with a uh, free smartphone app, which, by the way, forces you to uh, register to actually use it. And it makes you put in your phone number as well, but it doesn't even activate your phone number. It doesn't send you an SMS. It actually sends you an email instead of that with a verification code and all that sort of crap. So uh, stupid. Anyway, I can maybe understand why they did it. And it you don't need to pair the device. It seemed to uh, detect it just fine. And you notice that uh, there it is, A21 UKF. But I'm buggered if I can get the thing to use. There it is, Smart Lock Padlock. It's there. It, uh, I registered the uh, lock and it says I can press any button. So that's the idea, is when this comes in to the proximity of the Bluetooth of your phone, which when you set it up, by the way, you can actually calibrate in quote marks the distance that, or roughly the distance that it will actually detect at. Yeah, like it should just work. It detected the lock and you should just be able to press any button on here at all, and it's supposed to just open if the app, if your phone's turned on and your app is running. But, like, like, I cannot, have not been able to get the damn thing to work. So that's a big fat fail right out of the box. Unbelievable. Anyway, even if I could get the thing to work, I don't know why you would want to use uh, this retarded product, a Bluetooth padlock, because, okay, you know, you don't have to remember, you know, no combination to remember, no combos. You don't have to remember it. Okay, what happens if your phone dies or your app doesn't work, Bluetooth doesn't work, there's something else blocking it, I don't know, someone farts halfway across the room and Bluetooth doesn't work, then what do you do? You can't unlock your bike to freaking ride home or where get into your tool, tool shed or whatever it is. You're locking this stupid re thing with this stupid retarded product. I don't... God, just... Learn a combination, for goodness sake. But I'll tell you what, as an actual Bluetooth padlock product, I don't mind it at all. It feels really quite uh, robust, and it's got apparently a uh, boron, uh, like, you know, carbon-type hardened steely um, shackle and things like that. And I, I do like the button interface, which works quite well. As I said, uh, it comes with a uh, combination, which you can actually reset on your phone, by the way. And it's easy to open and close with the combination. So inside the app, uh, I can actually monitor the battery. I can set the uh, relock uh, time that it uh, takes to relock the thing. Last known location, you can actually get it. Uh, the app asks you, do you wish to track your location so you can find where the padlock was last used? No, thank you. I um, already have to give my bloody phone number and email address, so screw that. And you can change that uh, primary uh, code, which actually comes uh, printed on the uh, top of the instruction sheet as does an activation code. So I'm sure I can show that on camera because it doesn't matter because you don't have this lock. Hmm. And presumably I could show some uh, history here if I was actually able to open the stupid thing. Um, yeah, it just, I cannot get the bloody thing to work. And you don't have to pair it, but I've tried to pair it and it doesn't work. Like, it's supposed to just work. Like, I've followed the instructions. It's not a pebcac. So, uh, beats me. 
And also what I like is the design of the battery compartment here. It's down in here, it uses a CR2450 battery, but it doesn't let me pull it out when it's locked, which is great so that, you know, little smart ass kids can't come along, hey, I'll take out the battery, and the, so they won't be able to get back on their bike when they come back. So it's actually locked. So if I um, open that, what's the combination? There we go, open it, then the battery comes out full like that and we can pop out the CR2450. But it's actually got a backup. You can actually see the contacts in there that if you've got a flat battery and it's locked, right? Oh, I can't push it back in now. Oh, anyway. Um, it, oh, I have actually screwed myself because I put that back in without putting the battery in and I can't slide it in anymore. So I'm actually going to have to use this feature. You'll see how there's two contacts in there and it's got like a coin cell cutout like that. You can put in an external battery even so if it fails when it's in the locked position you can get in there and supposedly do it. Hmm, let's give it a try. Oh, got it. Jeez, that took a lot of bloody effort, let me tell you. So I was just about to <laughs> praise the uh, design of this, and it is actually quite good. I like it um, that you can, you know, override it a locked uh, thing. So I can now lock that back and get that coin cell in there like that and actually do that. But it's so finicky to hold it, and nobody's going to have a bloody coin cell with them if it dies. It's just uh, uh, unbelievable. Bloody... Anyway, someone was at least thinking when they designed that, that's for sure. Anyway, one of the things I was interested in is to actually test whether or not you could uh, hack into this thing easily using a rare earth neodymium magnet because you can do this on uh, a really cheap ass, you know, from the local hardware store electronic safes. You can just open them with a fairly large one. This is like a 50 by 50 millimeter by 25 millimeter. It's not large as you can get, but I thought it would should be good enough for this uh, kind of task. And you can do that if you know where the electronic solenoid is inside the uh, safe, or in this case, the lock, because this has to have some sort of electronic uh, solenoid in it, then, um, you know, I thought we could maybe see if it was vulnerable to that sort of mag magnetic attack. So what you want for this is you want a sock, um, because you <laughs> these things are incredibly powerful. Watch where you put them. Um, but just get it inside a sock so that you can actually, uh, you know, so it's easy to drag back off the surface. And we can get that in there. And I've played around with this with for about like half an hour or something, trust me. And I cannot for the life of, you know, I've tried swiping it, putting it in every location, orientation, things like that. And I cannot get it to, uh, you know, to even hear any sort of, um, you know, that the solenoid is uh, either, you know, feel it um, or actually hear it um, audibly that the solenoid is uh, engaging. So I haven't been able to crack this thing at all. So I think it is, you know, it seems to be fairly, um, fairly resistant to this attack, whether or not that's a deliberate uh, thing by Master Lock. I'm sure they're aware of those these sort of magnet uh, attacks and they've built that into it or whether or not it's just by, you know, accident of design that they've actually, um, you know, uh, prevented that or whether or not my magnet's not powerful enough, but you can get bigger ones anyway. So that's a good thing. That's really what I wanted to test. So that's a bit disappointing. I thought, you know, that would have been cool if I could just hack into that with a magnet, but no. And just in case you're wondering, uh, no, I cannot uh, do anything when it's open either. I can't sort of, uh, you know, audibly hear or see that it's uh, engaging in any way. So I think now it's worthwhile cracking this thing open and having a look inside and see uh, how it works and, uh, and see if there's any uh, vulnerability internally with, you know, I might be able to put the magnet in the exact location, figure out how the solenoid works or uh, something like that. And and maybe have a look at the, um, to see if there's any uh, power line channel attack, because technically you can get in there and access the uh, external battery contact. So you might be able to read a uh, signal off that. I could sort of tap into it now, but it's a bit fiddly. But I'm not really overly concerned with like a power line attack on these things, because these it's not like a safe where, you know, you could, if you had a tool that you could bypass, 
glass uh, electronic locks on saves with power line attacks, then, you know, it's worthwhile because people keep real valuables in there. But, you know, there's, for something like a padlock that's going to be used on a bike or, you know, a shed, fairly opportunistic uh, type stuff, then, you know, you're not going to have you know, or design a power line tacking uh, tool and get in there and stuff like that. But anyway, let's crack her open and have a squeeze. And I've also tried uh, physical uh, bump attacks as well by, you know, really slamming the thing down hard in various orientations and I cannot uh, get it to do anything. So it seems fairly impervious to that as well. This is interesting. It uh, seems to have been permanently locked. Well, the green is supposed to be open, but uh, I can't enter the code anymore. I don't know if I've damaged it, or I can actually see some sort of interlock in there connected to the back piece which goes in. So maybe it's got some sort of, um, you know, a tamper type thing in it, perhaps. Ta da! And we're in Lake Flynn, and now we can see what's going on here and why it was not um, susceptible to the magnetic attack because it doesn't use a solenoid. It actually uses a little motor in there. So what we've got is a little piece in there like that. So when the motor rotates, it actually... Oh, let me see if I can do it. There we go. It rotates around like that. So that drops down and allows the... Uh, the pin, uh, the locking pin, I guess you could call it, to uh, move across like that and Bob's your uncle. Now, you see down here, there also is another little catch. So when you push that back in, push that back in, oh, you probably can't, it's just rotating. You can see it just rotating down in there. So that would, I presume, be activating a micro switch or something on the board underneath to know when you've pushed it back in and then like you know half a second later after you've pushed it in then it activates the motor again dries it back and then uh, it will push it back up anyway i've screwed up oh, i think i've <laughs> screwed it up a little bit a couple of uh, springs have fallen out of this puppy but um yeah it, it but you can see you can see how it works. It is actually quite nice. So when you've got a rotational piece in here that must go through like a half or a full rotation before it will uh, release the, uh, you know, the sliding cam or whatever you call it, I don't know, um, and then get rid of the pins, there's no way that you can get a ma have a magnetic attack on this because it's not a simple, uh, you know, flappy solenoid like a relay or a, you know, a plunger-based uh, solenoid or something like that. When you've got that rotational component, you can't simulate that with a magnet. So, yeah, they've designed that properly. Completely resistant to magnetic attack. And if you're curious to see that... Uh piece that goes inside there, then that is what it looks like. So yeah, just figure it out. But anyway, when, when the flat part is vertical like that, then it just allows that to slide back and forth. Otherwise, when it rotates, it's going to lock that and prevent that from... It's going to go in there and there's no way you can get that out. Now I had to drill out these uh, steel pins uh, here, which were holding this uh, back cover on. So, you know, like, <laughs> it's not hugely difficult to get into. It did require, you know, a lot of um, drilling and force to actually uh, get through there. The drill slipped off the pins and also probably should have done some pilot holes or something first, but... And it looks like, you know, die cast alloy case or something. So I'm not sure of like the, you know, the rotational force. I'm not sure of, you know, the, uh, like the strength of the carbon steel to bolt cutter attack and all that sort of stuff. It's probably, you know, it's not the world's most secure uh, lock, that's for sure. But, but for general use, it's probably uh, going to be as good as any other, you know, half decent uh, padlock on the market. Like, you know, reasonably cheap one. Even though this one's much more expensive because it's Bluetooth. Unfortunately, it seems to have uh, permanently locked on, so or locked open, sorry, like, like it's giving green instead of the blue that I got before, so 
I'm not sure what's happened to the poor thing. I don't know. I don't think there's any sort of uh, tamper uh, protection. I can't see any sort of like tamper, uh, you know, thing in there that it just, you know, dies when the back covers are uh, ripped off or something like that. So if we take a little pin out of there, then we can remove that. There were two screws in there. I thought, uh oh, we might have to, uh, you know, drill out these things. But no, it looks like it's going to come apart. So let's have a squeeze inside because we want to have a look at the board. And ta-da, we're now more in like Flynn. And there you go, that piece that fell out looks like the lock, it looks like the lock-in uh, piece for the uh, coin cell holder that just pulls out like that. So you saw, you know, saw before how it only partially pulled out. That's how they did that using this interlock pin. I'll tell you what, it looks like this plastic piece here it looks like you can just like access, like you could just like drill through that really easy and you would actually get some access holes around the outside. But once again, if you have to be like, you know, use tools like drills to get into this sort of padlock, then, you know, you're doing it wrong, basically. And there's the micro switch that I uh, suggested would be in here to detect when you've uh, put the shackle uh, back in like that so it knows then once the shackles back in it to turn the motor and lock it and oh I figured out why it uh, was uh, going up green before it's because of the interlock switch on the back there wasn't you know it it was open so if I actually push down on that so if I put it down on the board whoa you just saw it spin so now okay it locked it just did its auto locking thing so now I can do that, woohoo! It actually spins around quite a few times. There you go. And of course, now if I touch the switch on the back here, it will spin and lock. Woo! Well, that's a neat little board. If you take off the uh, rubber backed membrane there, that's nice for a little bit of weather protection. Although this thing is designed for indoor use only, it's not designed for outdoor and rain and all that sort of stuff. And of course, there's our little uh, Bluetooth antenna, and it's, it seems quite nicely designed and laid out. And no surprises for finding, yes, the MSP430 uh, ultra low power uh, micro you'd find in this thing, and a CC2541, uh, which is a, uh, once again, Texas Instruments. So, Texas Instruments have a big win here. Uh, the uh, BLE uh, chipset, Bluetooth uh, low energy, which is exactly what you'd expect in a coin cell Bluetooth solution like this, you know, a small range, you know, close proximity, uh, lowest power solution possible. So there you go. That's pretty much all there is to it. External crystal there, a few passives, there's some uh, power stuff happening. Of course, you need uh, some diode in there f for the um, external battery uh, context, for example. But yeah, that's about all she wrote. And on the top side, of course, we've got a little bit of uh, power reserve, a bit of bulk uh, capacitance there just to uh, do the business for uh, uh, transmit burst in and for that might help also with the, uh, in fact, I noticed it did when I was fiddling, dicking around with that external uh, battery on the contacts and stuff like that because you don't want a little minute little wiggle, you know, get the battery down onto the contacts and you, you know, accidentally just release it for a millisecond or something. You want the bulk capacitance in there to just just uh, keep that charge while you're dicking around with the battery. Yes, of course, there's those uh, contacts down in there. So, yeah, they've developed this uh, custom uh, plastic holder solution, uh, you know, completely custom holder with uh, the external contacts and everything. So that's really well designed. They put, you know, quite a lot of thought into that. Quite impressive. C-E-E. -E. E, e? Hmm, extra E. And we've got a bit of hot snot there just to keep the uh, leads from flapping around in the breeze. And all of the uh, contacts, that's for the bed of nails uh, tester for production. And that would be the uh, programming port for the micro as well, plus the uh, also the uh, Bluetooth chipset. And not that I'm really going to go into any uh, detail on a power line analysis attack on this thing, but I've just got like a 12 ohm resistor in series with an external battery pack, and we are able to get uh, some activity on there, but I haven't really looked into it at all. But yeah, it is there, so potentially there is a uh, side channel power line attack. So that's the data I get if I press the correct key but uh it does seem to uh vary like like the first very first key i press 
is correct because what you're basically looking for here is does the data change if you press an incorrect key versus a correct key vice versa so that you can pretend, but look there we go like you could potentially figure out which keys are well not the correct sequence but then if you've got a retry penalty on there it could literally even if you were able to do that it could be impossible so it looks like uh, these pulses here, 132 milliseconds or thereabouts. You know, I'm not going to go in there and fuss and try to decode that. I, I couldn't be fussed because as I think I mentioned before, it even if a power line uh, side channel attack was possible on this padlock, it, like it doesn't matter. You're not going to bring the tools to do this. See? Or even if you could design a dongle, uh, you know, the little black box that you go along and plug it in and eventually, you know, do this to any of uh, these uh, master lock uh, padlocks on the market. It's just, you know, like, it's not like they're, they're storing, you know, locking up a safe with, with, you know, potentially, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars inside. And they're just not generic and universal enough to warrant, uh, you know, something like this. The people are just going to use them on their locker or their you know to store their gear or whatever and or their bike or something it's just it's just not worth the effort so yeah i'm not going to go any further than that but technically there's something there so yeah so anyway i hope you found that interesting that's a look inside the master lock bluetooth uh whatever model 4400 or something like that um a padlock which is not cheap it was like you know i think it's like a 50 dollar padlock or oh, it could be cheaper in the us i don't know but um it's like at the hardware store here i think at the local uh bunning store it's like over a hundred bucks or something so it's a pretty expensive doodad and and I'm not going to say this is like a pointless product, um, although it's getting there. There's probably, you know, some niche users. People might have a good use for something like this. You might be able to use the tracking capability or something to see if people are opening things or something like that. Maybe, you know, doing some logging stuff like that, perhaps. But just get a regular combination padlock using this thing with your phone. Murphy will get you every time the battery will die something else will go wrong and or you'll forget the combination because if you get so used to using the phone the bluetooth thing that that you get close to it and you just press any button you end up forgetting the combinations so when ultimately Murphy bites you on the ass and it doesn't work you don't have the combination you don't have a backup coin cell you don't have your phone's not working bluetooth's not working like it's ridiculous like just no Anyway, it's not bad designed hardware if you were to design a Bluetooth padlock. I don't mind it at all. It's, you know, um, they've pretty much done most things right inside this thing. So I rather like it from that uh, aspect. But as a product, ugh, grown Bluetooth padlock. Unbelievable. And of course, the other obvious way to hack into this thing is, well, via the Bluetooth. Can you, you know, have they enabled the security and all that correct? I don't know. I don't have the experience in that area. So I'm not going to uh, go to all that effort to uh, try and learn that and investigate that sort of stuff. I assume that they've done it reasonably well. So, may, you know, maybe it's possible. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But, you know anything's possible. They could have goofed it, but they seem to have designed the hardware quite well. They seem to know what they're doing. So as always, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up and engage because YouTube's all about engagement. Comment down below and rate and all that sort of stuff. And I'll have some videos here at the end related. You can see me uh, also goof like I did with this one. I accidentally locked myself out. I seem to, I'm two for two on that now where I locked myself out of a uh, safe that I was uh, working on. And I had to crack into it the old fashioned way with a... Uh, <laughs> with a microscope and a, a pair of needle nose pliers to and drill a hole in the side of it anyway that was fun so check out that video it'll be here somewhere that youtube end screen feature catch you next time